Hello peeps, it's Dave and Jacob here again delivering you the PC gaming hardware good times. Well, not necessarily good times because today we're sharing our fears for Nvidia's new generation of gaming graphics cards, the RTX 20 series. Yeah, hold on, let's not get all doom and gloom about this. I'm actually quite excited about the new GPUs. Well, all right then. It's on a doom versus hope head to head. Bring it. So first off, you've got to be excited about the fact that we're actually getting real-time ray tracing in gaming hardware released this year, in actual games released this year. It's been the holy grail of PC graphics for as long as I can remember, the process of actually simulating the physical properties of light rather than faking them through rasterization. Thanks to the new RT cores and the new Turing GPUs, the 20 series cards can accelerate the current industry standard of ray tracing, bounding volume hierarchy. And these, <laughs> your face. and these accelerators actually mean that RTX cards are capable of tracking up to 10 billion rays of light every second. Okay, so they may be able to manage this wonderful feat of ray tracing in a few games and only in select features like shadows and reflections, but oh my god are they so expensive. Nvidia's RTX 2080 Ti has an MSRP of $999, but because it's doing its Founders Edition shenanigans again, the Nvidia version is actually $1,200, and the board partners are likely to use that as a starting point for their cards as well. We've heard rumours that Asus is planning a $1,500 version. Then you have the RTX 2080 Founders at 799 and the third tier RTX 2070 at 599 Yes, a third tier GeForce graphics card that cost $600. Even at the lower reference cards, that's frankly ridiculous. And it's all because Nvidia has no high-end GPU competition, so it can price with impunity. Okay, yes, the new cards are ridiculously priced. And yes, Nvidia is pulling the whole Founders Edition shtick again. But at least this time there's a real reason behind their higher price tags. Previous Founders Edition cards were just reference GPUs with plain NVIDIA blower fans attached to them. They were simply reference cards with a higher sticker price. But the RTX Founders Edition are using factory overclocked GPUs with higher spec twin axial fans to improve the cooling and keep the noise down. This is the first time that any GPU manufacturer has actually released their own overclocked card as their default version. The reference versions are only going to come from the board partners now. Though that does mean that the first reviews will be based on higher spec cards. When you're paying $1200 for a graphics card, you're well within your rights to expect to play the latest games at 4K resolutions at the highest settings and at 60fps at least. But that's not going to be the case when you throw real-time ray tracing into the mix. The performance demands of ray tracing means that your hyper-extensive graphics cards may only be capable of running an RTX enabled game at those speeds at 1080p. At the recent RTX announcement event, we had a chance to play both Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 5, both using real-time ray tracing, and DICE has aimed specifically to get the RTX version of the game running at 1080p and 60fps, and it's gotten mighty close during our playtime with it. But the latest Tomb Raider wasn't displaying a whole lot of ray trace shadows, and was still only running at 33fps to 48fps, and that was on the Founders Edition of the super powerful RTX 2080 Ti. Ray tracing or no, do you really want to run a high-end graphical feature that tanks your performance so much that you have to play at 1080p? I don't. Come on, as you say, we're talking about a seriously high-end graphical feature here. This is freaking ray tracing. This is in real time. This is hardware tracking 10 billion rays of light every single second. That, that's pretty good. The fact that it's doing all that and is still able to run an intensive game like Battlefield 5 at 1080p and a pretty solid looking 60fps, that's incredible. With the top-end GPU of a generation ago, Battlefield 5 and Tomb Raider would look like slideshows running this stuff. I get that there's a lot of cash to run your games at 1080p, but you're physically simulating individual rays of light here. And these are also just the early alpha versions of the games we're talking about. And without the ray tracing, there are a host of rendering improvements built into the Turing GPUs that will actually boost performance across a host of traditional rasterized games. Nvidia has posted performance figures showing the RTX 2080 being up to twice as fast as the GTX 1080 when using these new features on top of the traditional um, performance boost that the GPU will get you anyway. So you gotta love that. So there are all these rendering improvements and ray tracing effects that developers can use to drop into their games. That's great, but how many are actually going to spend the dev resources to go to the effort of plumbing them directly into their games? Despite the PC being undoubtedly the superior gaming platform, there's no denying that game devs are targeting the lowest common denominator and developing just for the consoles. Those machines don't have the graphical power to utilize these effects, and they're running AMD GPUs anyway. 
So at least for the next generation of graphics cards, these funky new effects aren't going to find their way into a lot of games because the amount of work, and therefore money, it will take squeezing them in there is just going to be too damn high. But these new features don't necessarily have to take a lot of effort for the developers. I've been speaking to with techs within NVIDIA and they tell me that some of the new rendering techniques that they've been using have been dropped into existing games by the developers in just five days. That's not a lot of time to get seriously improved performance. But one of the most intriguing of the performance improving features is the Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS. This is a method of improving the visual quality of a game by using NVIDIA's AI power that's been baked into the Turing GPUs with the AI Focus Tensor Cores. Using its own supercomputer, NVIDIA is training its deep learning algorithms to recognise how a high resolution game should look. By feeding the machine with millions and millions of images, even from different games, it will then learn how to upscale images on the fly. Using this method, you download the learned algorithms on a per game basis within the driver releases, you can get another 50% extra performance using AI because the little robots inside your PC know what a high resolution game should look like. It's like some super smart version of anti-aliasing that simultaneously improves visual fidelity while boosting performance. How cool is that? That's all right. With the three GPUs NVIDIA has launched starting at $500, where does that leave the mainstream versions of the GeForce cards? Is there even going to be an RTX 2060 GPU? And if so, is that going to cost some $400? Where are we going to get the $250 mainstream graphics cards from? Given the fact that the RTX 2070 is possibly the lowest spec that you can use to achieve real-time ray tracing, we're not entirely sure that NVIDIA won't retain the GTX nomenclature for its lower-end cards. And with the reported glut of 10-series GPUs still in the channel, it's like that any more mainstream 20-series GPUs are going to be a long way off, potentially next spring. So we've had processors with lots of CPU cores baked into them ever since AMD first went to town with its Ryzen processors. Since then it has doubled down with the second gen Ryzen chips and rumours are that next year's Zen 2 CPUs are going to have even more cores in them. This has forced Intel to follow suit and pretty soon 6 cores and 12 threads will be the de facto standard for PC gaming. Well, possibly. But our games haven't really utilised these increased core counts. Until now. Speaking with the technical director of DICE, Christian Holmquist, he told me that they had targeted 6 core 12 thread machines to aid with the demands of real time ray tracing with the RTX. It's possible that an 8 thread CPU might be able to cope, but it would need significantly higher clock speeds than the 12 threads that DICE has been developing to. So it looks like the new graphical demands of the future are going to mean good things for the CPU makers and not just the GPU manufacturers. So, there's that. This is the first generation of almost a whole new world in PC gaming graphics, and that's always a concern. We're talking about a new GPU architecture running game features that no one has used before in games with the cards coming out for an insanely high price. And it's the early adopters paying the price and possibly not seeing a great return because early performance numbers aren't going to be that high, and then how many developers are actually going to be going to the effort of developing specifically for these niche GPUs. Sure, the cards will still be as good at traditional rendering, but you'll be paying the premium for features that you may not be using that often, or maybe even at all. There has been a lot of noise of a second generation appearing soon after, with a touted 7 nanometer update coming next year. We don't necessarily subscribe to that, it's probably not going to happen, but there is definitely, actually I shouldn't say that because it might actually happen then we'll look really stupid, yeah. but there's definitely some potential value <laughs> in picking up a cheaper, still powerful 10 series GPU and holding up for the second gen RTX cards. What is it? So whose side are you on? Do you agree with Jacob's doom-laden prophecies of greed, neglect and failure? Or is there some optimism still in your heart and a certain level of excitement about the potential beauty of PC games just around the corner? Let us know what you think in the comments and if you like what you've seen here, give us a like and subscribe and check back for more PC gaming and hardware facts and fiction both here and on the PC Games N website. Thanks for watching. Bye!